is the Case International Show, and I'm your host, Fakisha Kumbo. We have as our guest tonight the man who made the marriage of Afro-Cuban music and jazz. His name is Mr. Mario Bowser. Mr. Bowser, I am so happy to have you as our guest on the show. What did you do in Cuba before you came to America? When I was playing with the Havana Philharmonic, Philharmonic Orchestra, but and then I didn't want to go to the popular music. So I came to New York, I had the opportunity to come to New York with uh, Antonio Maria Romeo. That was uh, the biggest dance song orchestra in Cuba. And I came here to record it. Did you stay? Or you no, we stayed here 15 days. And I, I started listening to all these great bands, uh, Charlie Johnson, and Fletcher Henderson, and Paul Wyman, and I fell in love with jazz. I bought me a saxophone, I went back to Cuba. I said, I'll be back to live in this country. So how long did you take to come back? Well, uh, I, had a, I had to wait two years to get a 18, so I get a passport. So you were, you were 16 when you yeah, came here yeah, in the 16, beginning? Yeah, 16. So when did you come to uh, the United States? I came back to 1930. In 1930? Came to live. Now, if you add that up, people, <laughs> he, he adds up to be how old? 81 and a half. And right? a half. We'll be 82 years old pretty soon. You look wonderful. Thank you. Like thank I said, you. you look marvelous. Thank you, thank you. How did you meet Chick Webb? I mean, wh what was your involvement with Chick Webb? Was when, uh, I was working in the Savoy Ballroom with a band called the Missourians, and Chick Webb was a big band, the, the number one orchestra there. So there was opportunity. One of the trumpet players with Chick Webb was moving to do Kellington Orchestra, so he invited me to audition with his band. And I did it. And, he and after a few rehearsals, he told me how to play the jazz <laughs> idiom. And so then what did he mean by, what do you mean when you said he taught you how to play in English? I tell you why. See, you can, uh, you, can read, you can be a legitimate musician, no matter how good you are. And you read music, yeah, but the expression, different expressions is completely different. So he taught you how to do, to do the uh, black expression. Uh, yeah, how this guy, how the Negro express their jazz. I see. And then, then it took me no much time, and, and very little time I catch up with it. Now we know that Ella Fitzgerald really started her career singing with Chick Webb, uh -huh. but we also know that you were the one who really discovered Ella Fitzgerald. No, I didn't, I didn't discover. Okay, what happened with that? She was uh, she uh, she was in the amateur contest in the Harlem Opera House. Okay. So now when we came, when I came to work in the, in the morning to the first show in the Apollo Theater, that was working. The fellow that worked backstage told me, "Say Mario, it's a lady. They won the first prize yesterday. This is what you need in this band." Here. So I said, "What?" Well, she come around, introduced it to me. So the lady came by. And I took it to the rehearsal room downstairs with the piano player, and I flipped. And I run to Chick. I said, Chick, I find my diamond in the rough. <laughs> so who is it? I said, I'm going to bring it to you, bring the lady. So he looked at it, and she was a young kid. Don't have a hell of appearance. But she seemed wonderful. So she said, he said to me, what are we going to do with this? I said, well, we got, we're close here uh, tomorrow. And we got to play the proms in the J University. Let's take it. I said, we prepare nothing. I said, don't worry. Let me worry about that. So we took that lady over there. And that was that. And that was the beginning that was of her? That was that. So first you were night. the one who introduced her to Chick Well, Web. yeah, indirectly. And that was really the start of her career, yeah, getting yeah. big. But you also played with Cab Calloway. Yeah. And there's a story about Dizzy and the well, Cab Band. That what was that another story? story, see? And this and myself was friends. When I was working with Chick Webb, we become to be a friend. He and Maya Davey and Charlie Chafe, which of all John Trump players. So he always said to me, how you get all those first class jobs and I don't get those jobs? <laughs> I said, well, it's a two different position. You're a solos man, and they claim there's a whole lot of solos men around, and I'm just a fresh air man in the orchestra. So, I said, but don't worry, someday you're going you gonna to get there. So, so when I left Chick, I went with Don Redman, and then I went with Cap Galloway. He wrote to me, he said, you see, you got the best job in town. What happened now? I said, this, I'm going to get you there. But you got to do what I tell you to do. 
said, what do you want me to do? I said, I'm going to send you there in my place. And you tell her when you get there, you get there about 10 minutes before the show and tell her that I was, I'm sick and I call you. And you work there. And so he went there. I said, but limit yourself what you're playing. Don't play everything that you know because they're too advanced for them and they, they might don't. That's what the musician used to tell, criticize this. They say he was crazy. He played a whole lot of crazy stuff. And I used to say, no, this man is way advanced. This man going to change the idiom with jazz. When yeah. I got back about three days later, Cap said, what happened? I said, well, you know, we've been working so hard, Cap. I had a call. I had, a, I had to take a rest. So I sent that man. That was the first thing that came to my head. So he looked at me and said, a couple of days later, he said, hey, you want the boy in this band? I said, no, I don't want him. Hey. We need him in this band. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, send for him. And that's how he got him in there. So now what is Q-Bop? Q-Bop, after I created that, um, the Afro-Cuban, when they had, I introduced this to Chano Pozo. Okay, now Chano Pozo was? The creator of Manteca. It was a writer and a conga player. In, in Cuba? Yeah, okay. and he came here with his wife and another fellow playing conga, the, you know, that was a dance team. Mm. So I met that channel. So when the DC came to me, he said, I got a chance to play a concert. I don't know what to play. I said, why don't you play my music? He said, yeah, but I don't know nothing about your rhythm. I said, but I got a man just came from Cuba. He's top. So I took to meet the channel. I said, channel, take you conga, play, and sing some of your song to this. This is a flip when I heard that. So right away, they went to rehearsal. And the concert was a big success, and after that, I don't have to tell you, the history is there. Did he continue to work with, with Chano Pozo? Or? Yeah, Chano Pozo was in the band about oh, a year, until oh, he got oh. killed. Oh, he got killed? Yeah, he got killed. I know we had uh, Jane Cortez on our show, and she did a poem to Chano Pozo, but that was the first time I had ever heard of him. Oh, yeah. So it was quite interesting that He was a hell of a writer, <coughs> and a hell of a showman, hmm. and a hell of a conga player. Hmm. I mean, he got violently killed, or killed in a car accident or something? No, something Some happened. Some mess, huh? Tell me about the Palladium, New York City's Palladium. When the Palladium was created, it was a ballroom, just like the Rosen and the Acadia. There were three ballrooms, one and another, but the Palladium was the last one, and they, they, they couldn't compete with the, with the Acadia and the Rosen. So now, is it the same Palladium that's there now? On no, 14th Street? No, there was a 53rd and Broadway. Okay. It's a big new building there. So the man that was, was manager there knew me when I was working with the, with the color bands. So being the Machito band was so popular with the Jewish train and all the white train. We was working at the Concord Hotel in the mountain. Mm -hmm. So he came to see me and said, Mario, I need a favor from you. I said, what you want, Tommy? Tommy, Tommy Morton. He said, I'm the manager of the Palladium Ballroom. And we got about two more weeks to close the place. We cannot compete with the other ballrooms. So if you close here and that would day and give me a couple of weeks, I'll be able to survive. I was all right, you have it. So I came to the Palladium and played. The first couple of nights was packed. Mm. All that clientele, the Machito Orchestra, how they came there. But Sunday, they were very slow. I said, tell me what happened. He said, well, you know, in Sunday, the, your trade, your Jewish people, they, they read, stay home, reading the paper, look at the basketball game. I said, why don't you run one Sunday for the Latin people then? Latin people ain't got no play downtown to, to dance. He said, well, Mario, you know, we're afraid about that because, I said, afraid about what? I said, they interest you. I said, man, what's the matter with that? The people used to go on the Savoy. Black and white, everybody. Now, what know. year was this in? About huh? well, about what year was this? The Palladium? Yeah, yeah. What year are you that talking about now? That was in the fifties something. This in the fifties. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they call a meeting. Then this day, he said, "Well, Mario, go ahead. Let's let's try one Sunday." So I got, I went up town and got a hold of my compadre. He was a promoter in, over there in Latin town. I said, "Federico, oh, we got a room, but room like a club." So give it a kind of atmosphere so they, they, they don't have every, every Jim Jones jumping in there. So he said, let's call it Blaine Blaine Club. 
Blame Blame was a tune that was very popular by Channel Post in those days mm. that I used to play. Uh -huh. So I went to Channel, so I asked him permission to use it, and he said, go ahead, Mario, go ahead. So we run it the first Sunday. They opened the door about four o'clock and about five. You couldn't get no more people what? there. They closed Broadway. Now, wait the a minute. Did the, the, was the Palladium just on Sundays? I mean, the Latin night was just Sundays? Or Sunday, was, Sunday. Oh, it was just Sundays? The first Sunday. Oh, okay. And then we run another Sunday, and then we went to Wednesday. And then we said, well, well, the only way I stay here, if you get rid of that American band, they had a society American band. Uh -huh. Because the people coming here now to dance Latin. mambo, cha-cha-cha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and then I got another band and then Marcelino Guerra, and then I told Tito, Tito Puente. Puente. I yeah. said, why don't you organize a, a little conjunto to play in the afternoon here? Because he was working in the Copacabana at the ball player with Martin. Mm. So then he organized a group. And he come in there. So he, they got rid of that jazz band. Mm. And then we're going into the 100% Latin music. And that, that Palladium and went that for was a, a long that was, time, that didn't it? Palladium was like a Savoy was in Harlem. Yeah, now, what about the Savoy? You played the Savoy, too? Savoy was the greatest ballroom that ever exists in the city of New York. Really? Every every celebrity, every people from Europe, they, they, from Euro, they visit New York come to the, to the Savoy It ballroom. was big, too, right? Big. And all the dancing was creating in there. Mm. Did they have the Social Security, all that was good. That was created in there. But, but they played, like, jazz up at, at the Savoy, oh right? Oh, yeah. They played jazz, they played tango, they played waltz. Did they play Latin up there? And then I started play something with Chick. We had about two numbers. Now and then we throw one and then number. There was a, yeah. <laughs> now you talked about cha 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 a little just a minute ago. Now is cha 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 uh, the rumba and the mumbo? All of, does all that come out of Cuba? Oh, everything is from Cuba. It's a different style of dances. The great thing about a Cuba, every movement and music that they create. They created dancers to go along with it. Oh, okay. So cha-cha-cha is different than the mambo. Mambo is different than the guaracha. Guaracha is different than the bolero. Bolero is different than the guaguancó. I never heard of two of those. Oh, there's so many. So many. You, you heard it, but you know what happened? What? Somebody in here, after the revolution, when the revolution came, mm -hmm. there, there was no music was from, from Cuba was coming here. So they started calling everything salsa. That's what the name is salsa. That's why I don't like it because salsa don't mean nothing. It's no rhythm that you can say that's a salsa rhythm. They call salsa mambo, guaracha, they call salsa. They call everything salsa. Any kind of Latin music, they call it salsa. Any song. kind of Cuban music. Cuban music. Because the other Latin music is completely different. Oh, okay. We didn't know nothing in here about all the Latin music until the merengue. Cho, cho. And that's from, merengue is from, Man, like, from Santo Domingo. Oh, that's from Santo Domingo. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's the only two ballroom music that people dance by. Huh. Cuban music and Dominican music. Ah, oh, okay. So now, where did tango come from? Tango from Argentina. Okay. But that was a crazy long time Oh, ago. that was big in Europe in the early 30s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why you don't like Latin jazz term, the term Latin jazz? Because if you have a dice or something that I create with a name, I don't think it's nobody should have the right to come and, and change the name of that person. Okay. What's Latin is? What is Latin? Uh -huh. We know Latin to begin with. Uh -huh. So that I don't see why they do that. They did it with the salsa. They don't. They, I, I hate to. They, they're gonna do it to my music. My music, Afro-Cuban jazz. Yeah. And that's what it is. Afro-Cuban jazz.